I just want to really quickly preface the video. YouTube does not really want me to monetize off this video, and I keep getting ad suitability. No matter what I do, changing the title, changing the description, censoring things out, it still has ad suitability. Normally, I want to make revenue off the channel so I can further progress it. But no matter what I do, I can't fix it, so I'm just going to drop the video with ad suitability, and you guys can just enjoy it. All right, well, now you can enjoy an over-censored intro. This is Gas. Oh, wait, hold on, wrong one. What's your name, where are you from? Uh, All right, let's see, man. God damn, what the f***? Now, gas to gas is made up of something called nitrous oxide. And kids are apparently in <laughs> gas to gas to get high. If you don't know what gas to gas is, it's actually the company name, and it was founded in 2021. The headquarters are in Atlanta, Georgia, and the primary products that they sell are these whipped cream chargers, which people are in <laughs> and whipped cream dispensers. Now, the use of nitrous oxide is not really something new, but gas has taken over. I mean, it's not like it's easily accessible, has multiple different fruity flavors, and bright colors to attract young kids. Now, I can see why people like it, as you can get some euphoria, sedation, giddiness, and uncontrolled laughter. However, if a large amount of nitrous oxide is inhaled, or they have certain pre-existing health conditions, they can have some pretty severe effects. Most notably, a heart attack or hypoxia, which can be fatal. And that's just short term. Long term effects could be memory loss, incontinence, uh, you can even have depression, and psychosis. So let's fing make some. <laughs> to get started, we need 30.53 grams of something called hydroxylamine hydrochloride. This is also an extremely hygroscopic material which pulls moisture from the air. To this, we're going to add 50 milliliters of distilled water. The dissolution of hydroxylamine hydrochloride is actually endothermic in water. Let me explain this. Lattice energy is the energy needed to break ionic bonds, and when we dissolve this, it actually uses more energy to break these bonds than it releases, and that makes this process endothermic. So the water gets cold. I then added this to a 500 milliliter round bottom boiling flask with two necks. It's extremely important that we have two. After that, I made another solution of 30.53 grams of sodium nitrite. 50 milliliters of distilled water was also added to this reagent. In case you didn't notice, it's literally the same weight in water as the other one. The dissolution of sodium nitrite in water is also pretty endothermic, so it's good to have a hot plate on. While I waited for our sodium nitrite to finish dissolving, I put our reaction flask into an ice bath, and this is gonna be pretty important. We're going to add these two solutions together, and that process is exothermic, which means it's gonna warm up pretty fucking fast. Since we're creating a gas, I put a bent vacuum adapter with a stopcock on the right. I also added an addition funnel in the center neck, as we need to add the sodium nitrite solution drop by drop. Once all of our sodium nitrite solution was dissolved, I put it into the addition funnel. There were also some black things floating around in there, and I really don't know where that came from. We're then going to attach a hose to the vacuum adapter. This hose will lead it to its first destination. The first destination is a 15-20% to solution of sodium hydroxide. You may have noticed that I set these hoses up wrong and incorrectly. I did not notice this at the time. Since we want pure nitrous oxide, we have to scrub everything of nitric oxides. I'll come back to this in a little bit and explain why. After the sodium hydroxide scrub, it will then lead to another gas washing bottle. This is going to be filled with concentrated sulfuric acid to scrub out any other impurities and moisture. After the nitrous oxide goes through that scrubber, we can then collect it, which we'll collect from this black tubing. Before we can collect any nitrous oxide, we need to clear our system from any atmospheric air. So I'm going to add the sodium nitrite solution to the hydroxylamine hydrochloride solution, and we get some bubbling. This is pushing nitrous oxide through our system. Though, since I had my tubing on wrong, it only pushed concentrated sulfuric acid all over my shed. So while I achieved the flushing of the system, I also flushed some of the paint off of my walls. However, once I fixed the tubing, you can see that we have our gas being pushed into our sodium hydroxide solution. 
The nitrous oxide then bubbled its way into the sulfuric acid solution. Once I let it flush out for about 10 seconds, I then put on a balloon. This should be collecting our relatively pure nitrous oxide. At this point, I also decided to increase the drip rate, which would increase the production of nitrous oxide. And just like that, the balloon was getting extremely erect. No ditty. And here, you can see a full display of both of our gas washing bottles working accordingly. The balloon kept getting bigger and bigger. It got to the point where the balloon was getting too filled out and a fresh new balloon had to be put on, which also filled up quite nicely and quite fast. Now, let's explain what's happening in this reaction. When the two solutions meet, hydroxylamine hydrochloride will react with sodium nitrite through a redox mechanism where hydroxylamine acts as a reducing agent and nitrous acid, which is formed from the sodium nitrite, as the oxidizing agent. This reaction produces nitrous oxide, sodium chloride, and water. In neutral conditions, which is likely our scenario, most of the nitrous oxide will form from the dehydration of a symmetrical intermediate, which is likely hyponitrous acid. I also did not know this at the top of my head, so when I looked up this paper, I found that it likely was from the dehydration of a symmetrical intermediate. I don't know if this is exactly how it works, but it's kind of a shot in the right direction. Now, going back to the sodium hydroxide solution, what's the importance of it? Well, this is used to scrub any nitrogen oxides from our nitrous oxide. Now, when both of our reagents react, it will create that nitrous acid. Nitrous acid is unstable and it can decompose into nitric oxides. So when this comes into contact with our sodium hydroxide solution, it can make soluble salts and it will keep it in our solution. When it goes through the concentrated sulfuric acid, it kind of does the same thing, but likely just makes different acids like nitric acid or nitrous acid, which will stay in solution as well. This will also dehydrate the gas, meaning that we have a dry gas. Both of these working in unison should scrub any nitrogen oxides out and dehydrate our nitrous oxide so we have a relatively pure product. Overall, we got a fair amount of nitrous oxide. Now this is just one of the balloons and the smaller one, but you get the point. I'm not gonna calculate what the yield is just because I lost some of it initially and I don't really feel like doing it. But I will show you something cool. I don't have all the materials for the barking dog experiment, however, if we take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and we put it into a flask, we can do something kind of similar. I tried not to use a huge amount of it as I need most of it to be evaporated in the flask. I then rolled the isopropyl alcohol around to increase its surface area and to help it evaporate faster. I also put a beaker over the top so when I was ready to put the nitrous oxide in there, I could just easily put it in. I put some tape over a balloon and I punctured a small hole and I could push the nitrous oxide into the flask. Nitrous oxide is denser than air, so it'll just go on the bottom. Now, all we have to do is just light a match and throw it in there. I didn't record sound, so I'll do the sound effects. It didn't sound like that at all. And of course, thank you so much to all my Patreon supporters. You guys are the real MVPs and I can't thank you enough for supporting the channel.